In this lecture, we will solve the fourth and last problem based on economic load dispatch and the problem is taken from GATE 2003 electrical engineering exam. You can see the problem on your screen. The incremental fuel cost in some appropriate unit for a power plant consisting of three generating units are given here. IC1 is the incremental cost of the first generator, IC2 is the incremental cost of the second generator and IC3 is the incremental cost of the third generator and they are given in this form where PI is the power in megawatt generated by unit I for I equal to 1, 2 and 3. We have three generators and P1 is the power produced or generated by the first unit that is generator 1. P2 is the power produced by the second generator and P3 is the power produced by the third generator. And uh, this is what we have in this equations also. IC1 is the function of P1, IC2 is the function of P2, but IC3 is simply equal to 30. It is independent of P3. And I will explain the significance of this when we try to find out the correct option. Assume that all the three units are operating all the time, minimum and maximum loads on each unit are 50 megawatt and 300 megawatt respectively. If the plant is operating on economic load dispatch to supply the total power demand of 700 megawatt, the power generated by each unit is. So we need to find out P1, P2 and P3 in this problem and let's start with the solution. If you remember the lecture on economic load dispatch, I told you if the incremental cost is constant, we always load that particular generator most. And in this IC3 is equal to 30. This means for the third generator, the incremental cost is not changing with the power. This means we will load the third generator most and we can load it up to 300 megawatt because this is the maximum load which a unit can take. So P3 which is the power generated by the third unit is equal to 300 megawatt and if you see the four options you will find in the first two options P3 is equal to 300 megawatt but in the last two options it is not equal to 300 megawatt. So option C and option D are incorrect options and uh, now we have to choose the correct option from A and B. Now there are two ways to solve this problem. If you see option A, you will find P1 is greater than P2. But in option B, P1 is less than P2. And uh, when this happens, it is not important to calculate the exact values of P1 and P2. We can simply plot the graph and from there we can easily find out which option is correct. But if P1 is greater in both the cases or P2 is greater in both the cases. Under this scenario, we need to calculate the exact values of P1 and P2. I will show how we can calculate the exact values of P1 and P2 in this lecture also. But first we will try to find out the correct option following the graph of the incremental cost versus power. So let's quickly plot the graph. This is how the fuel cost characteristics of three generating units will look. IC3 is equal to 30 and uh, if you compare it with Y equal to MX plus C, you will find Y is incremental cost IC, X is the power produced and slope is equal to 0 and intercept is equal to 30. When slope is equal to 0, in that case we have a straight line like this and as intercept is 30, we have 30 here. So I see the incremental cost is always equal to 30 irrespective of the power generated. So this line here is for the third generating unit G3. I C2 is equal to 30 plus 0.4 P2. 30 is the intercept, 0.4 is the slope. 30 is the intercept and slope is 0.4. I have taken a random slope as we only have to find out the correct option out of A and B. So this line here is for the second generating unit G2. IC1 is having the intercept 20 and slope equal to 0.3. So in this case, the slope is smaller than this 0.4.
So we have a straight line with smaller slope. You can, if you compare the slope of this line and this line, you will find the slope is smaller in this case. So slope m is equal to 0 0.3 and the intercept is equal to 20. So this line is for generator 1. And as we already know, if incremental cost is not changing, it is constant, we have to load that particular generator the most. So we will load G3 most, power produced is equal to 300 megawatt. And out of G1 and G2, you can see the incremental cost of G1 is smaller. So we will load G1 more. G1 will be loaded more than G2. This means P1, the power generated by the first unit, should be more than the power generated by the second unit and the power generated by the third unit is the maximum. So this is how the order should be and if you see the option A, this order is followed here, P1 is more than P2. In option B, P1 is less than P2. So option B is incorrect and option A is the correct option. So in this way you have to solve this problem when you have to choose the correct option out of four given options. But if you have to find out the exact values of generated powers, then you have to follow the method number two. So now we will solve the same problem using the method number two. The total load is equal to 700 megawatt. This means P1, this means P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to 700 and we already know p3 is equal to 300 so put p3 equal to 300 here and you will find p1 plus p2 is equal to 400 let's say this is equation number one equation number one and we already know for minimum cost for minimum cost the incremental cost of first generator should be same as incremental cost of second generator. So we have 20 plus 0 0.3 P1 equal to 30 plus 0 0.4 P2. When you simplify this, you will get another equation 0 0.3 P1 minus 0 0.4 P2 equal to 10. Let's say this is equation number 2. Now solve first and second equations to find out P1 and P2. P1 you will get as 242.86 megawatt and P2 you will get 157.14 megawatt. So this is the answer and if you see the options you will find in option A, P1 is equal to 242.86 megawatt and P2 is equal to 157.14 megawatt. And we already know P3 is equal to 300 megawatt. So there are two ways to solve this types of problem. According to situation, just choose the suitable method. So this is all for this lecture. See you in the next one.